covered how to work out sharp key signatures in the last lesson, this lesson we turn our attention to the flat key signatures. Once again we start with the key of C major, which if you remember needs neither sharps nor flats to conform to the major scale formula. So we start with C, but this time instead of going up five steps to conform to the circle of fifths, we go up four steps as we're going to be exploring the circle of fourths. This takes us up to the key of F. When we measure the intervals between the notes in the F scale, we get tone, 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 semitone, tone, tone, semitone. This is almost in line with our major scale formula, but the note B needs to shift one semitone down to make it fit. Notice that there is no way this problem can easily be solved using sharps. And that is why we need flat names for the black notes on a keyboard as well as sharp names. So the key of F major is resolved by flatting note 4, making it instead of B, B flat. And we say the key of F major has one flat, B for battle. Notice that this is also the note that becomes the next key note in the circle of fourths. So now we have the key of B flat major. Once again, we have a problem to solve with the fourth note that requires flatting it to bring the scale in line with the major scale formula. So in this key, we keep the flat B for battle, and the new flat is E, which stands for ENDS, E-N-D-S. So we've got battle, ENDS. So already we can see the pattern forming in a way similar to in the last lesson when we were working with the circle of fifths. In that lesson, we established that every time we raise uh, up to the fifth of a key, we add a new sharp at note 7. Now the pattern that's emerging in this lesson is every time we raise the key a fourth, we add a new flat at note 4. That new flat then itself, that note, becomes the keynote of the next in the series of the circle of fourths. So I think we can now fast forward really to the end result of this process and take a look at a diagram showing all the keys that we include in this uh, lesson. You can access this as a printout from the toolbox if you like. Notice that each major key again has a relative minor key that uses the same key signature and that this key is based on the sixth note of the relative major. Also notice that in the last two keys we have the rather weird sounding names C flat and F flat. These of course sound the same as B and E. But we can't use those names in a key that already has B flat and E flat. Remember the golden rule, only one of each letter name can be used in a major scale. Finally, notice the two things to remember. The new flat is always note 4. And the order of flats is given by the monomic battle ends and down goes Charles' father. Incidentally, curious sounding monomics, aren't they? 
Father Charles goes down and enters battle and battle ends and down goes Charles' father. I wonder if you've spotted that the one is the reverse of the other. Now this comes about because the actual sharps that we derive from the circle of fifths are the same notes as the, or, or, or the same letter names I should say, as the flats that we derive from the circle of fourths just in reverse order. This sort of makes sense if you think about the relationship between the fourth and the fifth note in a major scale. Think for a minute about the, the, the key of C. If we think of C as being note 1, then in the key of C, G is note 5. C, D, E, F, G. But in the key of G, C is note 4. G, A, B, C. Let's just show you that on the guitar. So here's a note C on the guitar, on the fifth string at the third fret. And if I go up the major scale on this string, we get C, D, E, F, G. So if we count those notes, that's one, two, three, four, five. So we say G is the fifth in the key of C. But looking at it from the other perspective, starting on G, here's G on the 3rd fret lower uh, E string, we've got G, A, B, C. So C is only four steps up in the G scale. One, two, three, four. So G and C have this sort of double relationship. C is the fourth in the key of G, G is the fifth in the key of C. And that's um, the strange way that music works. Okay, so now let's go over to the whiteboard uh, where I'll demonstrate how you apply this knowledge of the circle of fourths to work out your flat key signatures. So, let's suppose you come across this in a piece of sheet music. Again, all you need to do, as with the sharps, you just need to count them. One, two, three. And then you have to remember your monomic. Battle ends and. Now, with the flats, it's slightly different. Remember with the sharps, we, we knew that the last sharp was note seven. And then we counted one forward. Now, this actually works backwards. Because in the circle of fourths, you flatten the fourth note and then that note itself becomes the next key in the circle. All you have to do to work out the key in the circle of fourths is to go one step back. So battle ends and, go back to ends, that's the key, E flat major. This traditionally does people's heads in, I know. Uh, quite hard to get your head around. But that's the new flat added, and that's also the, the fourth note of the, the scale. Um, so in this key, um, yeah, that's the new flat. <laughs> See, it's doing my editing already. <laughs> in this key, that was the new flat added. In this key, that's the new flat added. That's how it works. Let's do a couple more. Okay, so uh, one, two, three, four, five flats in that key. So again, you work out battle ends and down goes, and it's the down, the D flat that's the key signature, the the key that we're in, D flat major. Okay, uh, try one more.
So now we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven flats. Battle ends and down goes Charles' father. So we're in the key of C flat. Major. So really it's as simple as that. You look at the flats, you work them out by using the monomic, battle ends and, go one step back to get the actual key, E flat major. Battle ends and down goes D flat major. Battle ends and down goes Charles' father. So C flat major. Now the only one in the circle of fourths that's going to catch you out, maybe, is F major, because uh, F major is the one with just one flat. Really with that one, um, you just have to remember that the key with one flat is F major. If you think about it, we're in the key, uh, we're in the circle of fourths, and we started with C major, we've come up four steps to get our first flat. So the um, key signature with one flat in is C, D, E, F. F major. So in a way, the best thing is just to try to remember that one as a fact, really. The rest you can use this trick of taking the second to last flat as your, as your key. Okay, now let's have a quick look at how we work it out um, when we're doing music theory exercises. Um, take for example the key of A flat. Somebody says to you, how many flats in the key of A flat? Again, we start with the letters A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A. What I'll do immediately is put a little flat next to that first A, just to remind me that I'm in the key of A flat, not A natural. But I don't flatten that note. And you'll see why at a later stage, or in another lesson. Just get in the habit of flatting the first note. And then we'll flat that one in the process of adding the flats that we need to make this um, a major key. So now we simply apply our monomic and flatten the notes as we go and we stop when we come to note four. One, two, three, four. So we go battle, ends, and, so now I do flatten that A as part of this process, down, and I stop there because that's note four. So the key of A flat major has one, two, three, four flats. Battle, ends, and down. Uh, let's just do one more key of G flats. So stop G flat, and then I put A, B, C. D, E, F, G. There's note four, that's where I'm going to stop. So, battle, ends, and, down, goes, Charles. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six flats in the key of G flat major. And if I was writing that out in standard notation, that would look like this. Battle, ends, and, down, goes, charts. That's it. So again, you can say I just write the flats until I, I get to the key, and then I'll go one further. It's another way of doing it. That's it for this lesson. I would uh, encourage you to practice working with these ideas by just working out a few keys at random on, on a bit of paper. Um, that's just good practice and it makes you familiar with the uh, two sets of rules that we want to try and remember. You'll be using this knowledge time and again as we scale the, the heights of the guitar music theory pyramid. So you will get plenty of chance to sort of put this into use and as you use it it will become more familiar to you I'm sure. Okay, 
Now in the next lesson, um, we're going to look at how we make chords from the major scale. And this begins to get quite interesting because this is, this is where we really begin to start using this sort of knowledge in a way that's really useful to you as a guitarist or as a songwriter. So I look forward to seeing you in that next lesson. Thank you.